Enough days have now passed that we can assess how the markets reacted to Bob Iger's Disney earnings call, and it would appear that he did manage to buy himself some more leverage from his friends in Wall Street and the surrounding media complex. Unfortunately for Disney shareholders and for fans alike, that means they are about to pay a heavy price. What did it cost? Everything. As I covered live with Valiant Renegade, Mike the Mexican Iron Man, WDW Pro, and others who will give far more comprehensive analysis than any other media outlet out there, including the financial ones, the earnings call was a highly staged, choreographed, and scripted affair, where only select and pre screen calls from pre approved, eager friendly corporate shareholders were allowed through. As such, the earnings call did what it was supposed to do, namely pull the wool over the eyes of the target audience of institutional shareholders, who can only read quantitative numbers on a spreadsheet, but who have no concept of the qualitative issues which has caused audiences worldwide to flee from Disney products. And that, incidentally, would be a big part of why more than a million have cancelled their Disney Plus subscriptions in the same time frame that their direct streaming competitors grew. And why Disney's movie division and the Disney Plus productions lost billions last year. Without that qualitative understanding, Wall Street guys will hear Bob Iger brag about upcoming releases, like Deadpool 3, Marvel's Agatha All Along, and Star Wars The Acolyte, and not realize that Agatha All Along is going to lose a fortune and end any and all goodwill Deadpool 3 may have created, while The Acolyte is going to make the Star Wars brand even deader than it already is. Without that qualitative understanding, they're not going to get that making another Pirates of the Caribbean that follows the Kathleen Kennedy School of Filmmaking. Put a chicken in and make a lady gay! Is going to lose shareholders another 300 million, just like Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny did last year. And before you wonder, yes, while as of yet unconfirmed, there are reports that the chick they sideline Johnny Depp with is not only diverse, but also gay and a Marxist who hates capitalism to boot. So that ticks a lot of boxes on the DEI scorecard that Disney employs. That's incidentally another qualitative measure that the Wall Street guys just don't understand. The Disney DEI requirements, available since they were implemented, but given renewed interest by Elon Musk re-xing them, mean that it doesn't matter that Marvel is going to course correct, and I use the term lightly, by bringing back classic characters that audiences actually care about. You see, Disney's very own DEI rules and regulations mean that those characters are just going to get sidelined following the Obi-Wan Kenobi template. That series was originally going to be about Obi-Wan, young Luke Skywalker, and Darth Vader, but Disney's then newly implemented DEI regulations put an end to that, as that would have been too many white males on screen at the same time, which is the honest-to-God reason why they had to replace young Luke with young Leia, and force in a new lead character from an underrepresented group so they could reach their DEI quota. These DEI regulations and quotas remain in play, which means that none of Disney's core underlying issues have been resolved, quite the contrary. Iger may have made some successful cuts, which is all that Wall Street can read, but they are blind to the fact that qualitatively, the magic remains dead at Disney. That's why we get pathetic pieces like this from Fortune magazine. Bob Iger gave an Oscar-worthy performance on Disney's earnings call. The Iger fanboy author writes, I don't often listen to earnings calls because they're usually a dull recitation of numbers that can be more easily digested in written form. But this week's Disney call was an exception. I wish I had been there. CEO Bob Iger gave an Oscar-worthy performance. Yeah, that was a performance, all right, because there was nothing legit about it, but moving on. Before citing a single number, he announced, Disney has hired ex-Alabama coach Nick Saban, heartthrob of millions of middle-aged southern men, to be an ESPN commentator. Roll Tide. Yeah, that's really going to make a huge difference. 
The company is releasing in November a feature-length animated sequel to Moana, global symbol of the power of diversity. Um, it's actually no such thing. Moana was an authentic story taking place in a limited geographical location, and it remains to be seen if they will have time to convert the TV series into a theatrical feature by November. The company is investing in Epic Games, maker of Fortnite, the obsession of post-pubescent male children everywhere. You know, that was also true for Marvel at one point, look what happened with that. And Disney will be the exclusive streaming home of a new extended version of the movie Taylor Swift The Eras Tour, celebrating a star who has proven herself to have unmatched appeal for girls, and a surprising number of guys, of all ages. Yeah, and shareholders had to pay 75 million for the privilege. Anyone we missed there? Add to the fact that Disney leads the industry with 20 nominations headed into the Oscars, which, by the way, will be broadcast on Disney's ABC network. And, oh yes, the numbers were pretty good too. Operating income up 27%, adjusted earnings per share up 23%, streaming operating income up 86%, and a healthy 7.5 billion in cost savings for good measure. Actually, most of that is due to cost-cutting. The problem that Fortune magazine doesn't seem to understand is that you can't cost-cut your way to sustained future growth, not without winning back the audience. And there's no sign of that happening. The performance pushed Disney stock price up more than 10% yesterday. The only person whose heart wasn't touched was Nelson Peltz, the activist investor who is bidding to join Disney's board. It's deja vu all over again, a spokesman for Pelt's Trian partner said. We saw this movie last year and we didn't like the ending. And indeed, there is no reason to like the ending. Because this is all cost-cutting, nothing of the fundamentals that matters have been changed. Oblivious to that though, Fortune writes, Sorry Nelson, when it comes to telling stories, you can't beat Disney. At least as long as Iger is at the helm. <laughs> Are you serious? What's bad news about this is that while nothing has really changed, the magic remains dead because Iger killed it. Wall Street, here represented by Fortune magazine, doesn't see that. Which means they won't be giving Nelson Peltz the press he surely could need to win over any shareholders on the fence before April's shareholder meeting, where the future of Disney will be decided by the shareholders. Let's hope that the majority of Disney shareholders aren't as easily fooled as Iger's Wall Street friends, because with Bob Iger still in charge, Disney is doomed. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments.